the riots on Sunset Strip. By the mid-1960s, the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles had become a popular center of countercultural attention. It featured famous nightclubs like Pandora's Box and Whiskey A Go-Go, where bands like The Doors, Love, The Birds, and Buffalo Springfield played. The crowds walked the streets, visited shops and bars, and generally just hung out. It was that latter category of hanging out that made business owners and older residents of the surrounding neighborhoods nervous. By November of 1966, the City Council, on their behalf, implemented a handful of measures, including nightly curfews to curtail what they referred to as the growing nuisance. First, they targeted the Whiskey A Go Go, forcing its managers to change its name to the Whisk. The powers that be had encouraged the passage of strict curfew and loitering laws to reduce the young crowd's congestion. These decisions and suggestions did not go over well with the local rock music fans as an infringement on their civil rights. Tensions slowly grew into protests. After a 10 p.m. curfew was passed, things deteriorated even further. On November 12, 1966, flyers for a demonstration later that day were passed out. L.A. radio stations announced there would be a rally at Pandora's Box, which was facing forced closure and demolition. That evening, one to 3,000 demonstrators took to the streets in protest. The crowd included celebrities like Jack Nicholson, Sonny and Cher, and Peter Fonda. John Densmore of The Doors stated, So we're the house band at the Whiskey A Go-Go, and I'm sitting upstairs looking out the window. It's like a Tuesday night, and it's complete gridlock and thousands of hippies on the street, and I said, wow, we're taking over. Stephen Stills, then of Buffalo Springfield, attended and would later write the perfect anthem for the protest called For What It's Worth. This included the famous chorus of Stop, Hey, What's That Sound? Everybody Look What's Going Down. The following weekend saw further riots, culminating in the arrest of 47 people. Two weeks later, a larger demonstration took place. This time the crowd reached 5,000 while police responded by sealing off the strip and arresting 100 more people. The unrest would continue off and on from there until the following month. During this time, local administration decided to rescind the youth permits of 12 of the strip's clubs, making them off limits to anyone under 21. The Los Angeles City Council voted to acquire and demolish Pandora's box. Though things would eventually die down, both the tension and resentments between youth and the older generation would continue into 1967 and beyond. As Bob Gibson, who managed both the Mamas and the Papas and the Birds, later reflected on what would also be called the Hippie Riots, if you had to put your finger on an event that was a barometer of the tide turning, it would probably be the Sunset Strip Riots. In the spring of 1967, the song Stills wrote about the riots for what it's worth, would enter the top 10 for his band, the Buffalo Springfield, and stay there for the next two weeks. If you like this video, subscribe, like, and we'll keep doing more.